Thank you. Okay, so start. Okay, so thank you for attending this presentation. Um, I will talk about uh, building not so straightforward pages with Apex. And this is more um, my experience over time. I've been with Apex for uh, right, since 2004. I really loved it when I saw it for the first time. I was first doing Oracle database. And um, since I saw it, I fell in love. And since 2007, I only focused on, on Oracle Apex. So during the time I uh, figured out, okay, if I want to do certain things, um, I, I follow certain guidelines myself. And in this presentation, I want to talk about that. Uh, I'm the founder of Apex R&D, uh, a company located in Belgium. And at the moment, it's very nice weather here. Um, but I'm also locked down just like anybody else. Um, I'm also the founder of uh, two products uh, that we built with a team within our company. Uh, the first one is if you want to do printing in Apex, you might have heard of Apex Office Print. It allows you to uh, create PDFs based on templates or Excel files. Uh, you can have templates in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, HTML. And uh, last year, end of last year and beginning of this year, we, we launched another product called Apex Media Extension. If you use Intermedia in the Oracle database, um, you probably know that like this got desupported in 18 uh, version of the database and 19 is completely gone. So you can use Apex Media Extension as a replacement for Intermedia. It allows you to change files uh, or images uh, resize them or uh, grayscale them and, and like many more things. Um, we will actually come out with the version 21 release of both these products this week. So somebody who's on the call, you know, know more than anybody else. I also try to share my knowledge on my blog and uh, you can also find me on Twitter if you have any questions. Uh, typically, I like to take questions on the during my presentation, but I think for the online meeting, it's better to do it uh, like afterwards. Like this presentation you find on slideshare.net uh, on my account there. And also on GitHub, you will find the application that I'm using during my presentation. So you don't have to take notes. It's also recorded, uh, this presentation, uh, and you find it all the code that I will show, you will find in a sample application, which you can download from my GitHub uh, account. So since everybody is locked down, I want to take you out and uh, through a walk through the park. And I will talk about three plus three techniques, three techniques uh, concerning reporting in Apex and three techniques when you want to write data uh, to your database. So I will start from like simple things and I will build up to more advanced things during the presentation. So the first thing I want to cover, or I just want to say actually is use universal team to the full extent. Peter already said it, I think who said it as well, um, but it's really like people, they don't use it to the full ex ex extent. So when you go to universal team, so you go to apex.oracle.com slash UT, um, you actually can do a lot of things. So you, you can follow getting started, design guidelines, certain components. Like when you click on some of those things, you can look at how, like if I have a report, how can I make like a timeline or a status, a specific status. Like you have all the different components that you find in Apex uh, and they are shown really nicely here. Um, so you don't have to try things yourself. You just go to this application and you find a complete overview how you can make a report look like. If you give a car template to this report, for example, how does it look like? And you can just follow along here. So this is in the components section. You have 
migration guide, like Peter talked about this. Uh, if you are going to upgrade universal team, it's important to do that. So it talks about that. The, all the different icons you find, there's a nice section and you can search for icons. But what not many people know, is like when you click on it, you can play with it. You can say like, I want a bigger icon. Um, I want to rotate it maybe. This doesn't make sense, but maybe this is better. And then I want, for example, a checkbox here. And you can just copy and paste this HTML or you can copy this uh, classes and you can put this in your own code. So it's very convenient way to build your own custom logos as well, starting from a logo or from an icon that exists. And then the last section, which is really nice as well, is for example, this button builder. Here is a normal button. What that you can do is, okay, I want a text with an, an icon here, and I am going to change this icon to, for example, this. Uh, what happens if I make it hot? And then here, what happens if I use specific classes? Now, um, again, like those are template options which are covered by the other presenters. Uh, but here you also see if you build your own custom code, which I will do later on, uh, you might want to use the classes or some HTML syntax. So you can, again, you can copy it here and you have your button as you see it on the screen. So the link text, the attributes, uh, and the entire markup you find here. Here, when you work with, um, like you want to, to build an application for iPad or for uh, iPhone, this is important as well. Instead of coding some CSS and say like, I want to have this specific width, um, or even if you know media queries, you can make it more advanced. Like for iPhone, you use certain things. Um, don't do that. Read about responsiveness that's built in Universal Team. You, there are already classes that you can use and it will tell you when certain things will show up, uh, when things are smaller, certain columns are hidden, etc. Again, here there are many other things that are worthwhile to look at. Layered modifiers, for example, so there are many, many things out here and I recommend to look into this if you didn't do this yet. So this is my first tip, which uh, I wanted to, to say. Oh. The second tip here, which I use quite a lot is if you know a lot of SQL, the more you know about SQL, the more you can get out of your Apex reports. And if you know templates, you can do even more. And I think in the next presentation, Richard will talk about uh, some of those things as well. Um, but here I want to give an example. So this was a pharmaceutical company who wanted to have a report like this. So they have um, different therapeutic areas, they have the products and they have some numbers for the budget that they have, how far are they with it? Are they under budget and the number needs to be in red? Are they over budget? They have some groupings here, the totals, and some like to very big total at the bottom. But you might also see that there's colors for the different columns. So how do you build this in Apex? And this is what is behind it. This is just a classic report, but the SQL that is behind this report, I use a union, I use some analytical functions, I use some groupings, and I use a custom template with columns and rows. Uh, so the way I thought to, instead of just going into the code of this, I, I thought I'm going to build this up. So I built a sample application to explain really what is happening behind the scenes. So I, I want to, step into this sample application. Again, you can just download it from uh, my GitHub account. Uh, so let's go to the reporting section. You have the link to Universal Team here. And let's just go to classic report. So the first example here, very simple. Yeah, you put a classic report on your page, um, but here's a bit, bit different. So here I use, um, I highlight certain things. Whenever my credit limit is over a thousand, I highlight 
uh, I, li I hi highlighted. And here, I don't even, this is a classic report, but it doesn't look like a classic report. So how can we do that? Oh, thing is in the way. <laughs> Make it look a bit smaller. Okay, so let me go into this code. So here, just a classic report. You see it here. Um, when we look at the template, nothing special here. When, whenever we look here, so here we have the highlighting. So we have the highlighting. Again, this is classic report, but it's a different template. So here I created a custom template. When I go to this template, so first of all, yeah, if you have never done this, where do you find it? You go to your application, you go to shared components, you go to your templates here. And I typically put any custom template, I give the name dot custom, so they're always grouped together. So here's your entire list of templates at Apex ships. Uh, if you search for custom, you find all the templates that you have. So when I look into the one that I used, so let me go back here. So what am I doing here? So this is some styling, the, the templates, Basically, it's a bit of HTML that uh, Apex renders behind the scenes. Um, and here you have for each row, the generate a table row, and for every column, generate uh, a column, basically. So the generic template is using a column, like this is for every column, it's the same thing. Whenever my credit limit is a thousand, I render this. Whenever it's not, a thousand, I render this. And you see here that my background color is different. So this is a very simple way to how to do certain things. Um, I get your uh, messages. Um, so I hope everybody hears me, me right. Otherwise, uh, please put it in the chat. <laughs> Okay, so this is for this template here. I will, I maybe want to, if I create a new one, when you first do it for like the first time um, and you're doing from scratch here, you have here a choice between generic columns and named columns. And this people don't always understand what the difference is. So I showed in the previous example, generic columns for every column is using the same template. Now I will show a, an example with name columns. We are going to specify the different column names. So named columns, so here's, here's one. So here we are really specifying the column name and you use uh, those hashtags uh, in, in front of it to reference them. So this is a custom template and li, this is HTML for a list. And uh, we have, before the rows, we have the UL, uh, it's a grouping of the list. And after the rows, we end the grouping of the list. So this will give us this uh, template here. So this is the first thing. Like we use classic report, we customize, we can customize the, the look and feel with the template. It's the first understanding you need to have. The next one here, I'm going to group. So by category, I have a total. So if I take those three, I add them up, I have 205. So how can I do that? A very simple way would be to do a union. So I have a union for every category, and then I have a union for the total. So if I look at the code behind this, So here's my first query the, from demo product info. Then here is my second one. I grew by product and I have the sum of my list price and then have a final union to have the total. And then I use like an order number to specify them in the right order. That's how I build this uh, report. Now I might hear some of you saying, um, 
well, Dimitri, this is nice, but I'm much smarter than you. I can, make, I can do this without a union. And you're absolutely right, you can. Uh, but my intent is to build up the, the things. So in the next example, we are going to do some more advanced things. And here it is, whenever you know SQL, and what you can do with SQL, you have an advantage. So in my first example here, I'm using an analytical function to, sh to get the average partition by category. So for, I, this is the classic report again, uh, all the rows, and I have here an average four accessories. So 68 is the average of those three things. Uh, 97, the average of those, and 86, the average of those. So let me go into that source. So here we use an analytical function. So we don't have to group by, like with the union, we did group by to get the sum. Uh, here we have an average of the list price and we partition by category. Um, here we have a rank and uh, we are again partitioned by category and we order by list price. So this is the first example. The, the second one here, we do a bit more. So we are uh, having a different line here. So this is, you could do this with union, but we are using again, an analytical function. So to build up on the previous example, this is what I had previously, I have now added group by, but it's not a, a very normal group by, it's like a roll up. We are rolling up by category and product name. So what this is doing, it allows me to say, whenever my grouping is zero, just like use uh, minimum rank num, Whenever my grouping is three, put in total. Whenever my, uh, um, or like otherwise, just put like the category in there. Uh, here we have grouping ID. So I show you what this is actually doing. And uh, here we have the sum of the list. And here we have whenever my grouping ID is one. So I know uh, it generated like an, uh, an a, a new group if you want. I want the average list price. So let me go back to this example. I know like it might be overwhelming at the first, uh, when you see this the first time, but here's my grouping and you see it puts a one when it added an extra row. So Oracle, by using this analytical function and this grouping with roll up, it created a, a, a new row if you want based on the, it added the category here and it added the average list price here and it didn't add it here. When we, let me go back here. So I hope that you see here that it, why it's only showing the average list price in the first exam, like in the grouping. So here, whenever my grouping equals one, show the average list price, otherwise do nothing. This is why we have this here and not here because this is one and the others are not. So I wanted to give this technique uh, because this is what is behind the scenes in the, in the example that I gave. Um, so let me go back to my PowerPoint. So all the techniques that I showed are applied here. You have this line, uh, so it's a customized template um, to show it in gray. We have different colors it's with a class or with CSS. Um, we have uh, groupings to show um, uh, averages or to, to show totals. We have that. Uh, here we have a, an overall total. So those are the techniques that I used in that template or in that screen. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, so whenever, it, like I cannot do it with a classic report or an interactive report, you can always use a PSQL region. So again, I had to build this screen. So it shows by year and by category where a specific product is. It's for the same customer, 
uh, pharmaceutical company. Uh, they wanted to specify a start year and end year, so and they wanted different columns for those years. And then they wanted by category. So if the product is in an accelerated program, they wanted to see here. If it is in the launch category, they want to see it here. Is it in defend? They want to see it there. So and by year it changes. So to make this in a classic report, I guess you could do it with generic columns or something, uh, but it's hard because like by different year, you need to generate a new column. Um, also the grouping, like how is this specified? Like you don't have different rows here. So how would you specify this in a classic report? It's doable, but I went with a PLSQL region because I found it more easy. So how does that look like? This is basically it. I write um, with syshttp.p, you can write out to your uh, page. So I create a table. So you need to know a little bit of HTML, a table and a header. And then I go over my, the number of years that I have to generate. So I calculate the number of years and I generate a column for all of those and I put a year in the header of that. Next, whenever, so I need to group by category. So by category, I loop to create my rows. And for every row, I will create a column. So here I do, I generate a column. Um, I put the status in, in bold and um, I put the product name inside that column. And then I have some little bit of CSS to accompany that uh, or to make it a little bit nicer, to give it a background color, to do some padding. So that's what you have here. Then. So that generates that. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so that's the PSQL region. So this is where um, my three tips are for on the reporting side. So people ask to create those reports. They are not really standard Apex reports. So three techniques that I covered, universal team use that to make your reports look a little bit different by using classes or, or different like cards, for example. Um, in the previous example, I use a combination of techniques and here I use a PLSQL region. So this is on the reporting side. Now I will go more on how can we write things back to the database. So we want to edit some data uh, on the screen. The first tip I have, or what I typically use is Apex item. So this is um, a, an application I built um, for the occupational therapist in Belgium and they are putting their uh, clients in this system. And um, let me see. What's, um, my PowerPoint hangs it looks like. Oh, let me go back. So let me quickly show you um, this application. I hope it will go. It's not doing much, it looks like. Okay, let me take my keynote one, it should be better. Okay, so here, so in this application, uh, they enter uh, what people can still do or not do. So here, for every category, they say like, can people still sleep? Can people still uh, walk around? Can people still um, do the dishes? So they have a slider and like 
for every category, they are going to rate people's behavior. And if they can still do something in scoot and screen, if it's harder, it becomes red. So that's uh, this, um, what this is doing. So I wanted to focus on, on this part of the application. So they can uh, hide and show different areas whenever they stay over some, some um, category, they get a, 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 some, some extra text, what it is doing, and then they have this slider thing. So how can you do this in, in Apex? So here, I use a classic report again, union all, but I use Apex item because here, what happens is whenever we slide, we want to save it back to the database. So we have a standard template, but we have some CSS, and then we have some JavaScript to show and hide uh, and uh, the different region, and also the slider to use the slider. And now we have a process to read the Apex item values. You don't need to understand, like you don't need to read all that, but what I want to highlight here is this is my select statement. Um, and I give a class in my um, query. So I know for every section um, how I want things to look like. So I have a core domain, I have some domain, I'm using union all. And uh, for every domain I have, like it's called ICF, but uh, uh, you can see it as like an item within a domain. Uh, and here it's like some, some other uh, category of uh, item. We, we have this and we combine that in another uh, select statement here. And there we are using Apex item. So you, you see it here, Apex item dot text area. And here I use like whenever I call it a level, my level is zero, run, run, render uh, a text area whenever uh, um, like I'm in a different section, render uh, a text area with a different select list. Um, and here, whenever I'm in this level, the lowest level, use the span. So what this actually means, let me go back to um, here, this one. So this is one level, this is one level, and this is one level. So level zero, one, and two. And here I might have a text area, and here I have this slider. So this is what the different, here I'm building up my levels if you want, the different data. I combining it, and whenever I have a certain level, render uh, a different, some different HTML. Here, this is, uh, again, you don't have to understand, but it's the level of complexity that you want to put in your Apex application. So here we use a little bit of JavaScript uh, to show and hide certain things. And you have the code here, how to do that. Do that. Whenever I uh, click on something, I hide uh, something with JavaScript or show something with JavaScript. Uh, here's a slider. I, I Googled slider, I searched for a JavaScript slider, and this is, and I implemented this in Apex. So, in my JavaScript section, a rule talked where you should put your JavaScript. I add this piece of code, and it's just a copy and paste of the slider implementation of the JavaScript that I found on the internet. Uh, and then here's some CSS. Now, the magic thing to save this all back to the database. It's uh, with um, uh, this process. So we are looping over uh, Apex application GF01, and we are updating uh, our table. Now, where is this GF01 coming from? This is because we use Apex item. So with Apex item, you specify your ID. So uh, here's five, and here's ID two. Um, and I think, I don't know if I have it on the screenshot. Um, there's also like a one, like a typically a hidden item uh, where I store the ID in. So you would need to read those out. And this is what's happening here. So the value of the item with ID two is here. The value of ID 
tree is here, the value of uh, item five is here, and my ID is in a hidden item, uh, which is has the value of one. Okay, so this is a bit more advanced, but we are not yet doing like Ajax calls or something like that. Um, I guess when you look at this uh, a bit closer, um, I have to go now a bit faster, but when you look at this at your ease, I think you will understand it. Uh, now we will do a bit more on the dynamic front. Uh, so we are using built-in features and dynamic actions. So this is an example which I used in a different, uh, for a different client. Uh, so tennis, uh, tennis, um, uh, all right, the overall tennis uh, uh, corporation here in Belgium, they have an application and they provide this to all the tennis schools and the, the tennis clubs. So it allows them to say for this court, I want to allow people uh, to reserve um, their, uh, make reservations. So what is that? Like how, how would you build something like, this was the requirement, like they, they come up with something, like uh, I have my tennis indoor and I have outdoor uh, um, courts and here are the different courts, here are the different days of the, the, the week. Um, and I want to give a name to this schema of uh, reservations. And here, this is basically on Monday, they can take half hours. Uh, maybe on Tuesday, they can do full hours. Um, so they define the schemes that, that they have on the different days for the different courts. And then like, if I would see you, then you could raise your hand in, in your home, like if you think this is a classic report, or if you think this is like a PLC core region, or what do you think this is? Um, another, before I answer that, there's some other things that's, that are happening here. So this is a button here on this uh, level. Whenever you click this button, you get a, a pop-up. And this pop-up uh, or this modal dialog, if you want, um, here you can say, I want this selection and I want to apply on th those days and on those uh, courts. So it's a fast way to define the same uh, schedule. So instead of clicking here every time, like click, 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 like they have to click uh, two, four, five times seven, 35 times, no, they, they can also do it with uh, this. So they just say like, on the different days, on those, give all the selection and it's doing that. So this is what's behind it. It's an interactive report and I use Apex item, which we have seen before, and I use some dynamic action. So with the interactive report, I use a standard break. So when I saw this, I, I thought, well, I can use a break here. Um, those are my different lines. Um, but yeah, what will I do with this? Like I can create Apex items here, but like this is strange, right? So, but again, like I will walk you through how to do this. Uh, with the dynamic action, action as well, like how do you save it? This is using an autosave and it's refreshing your report behind the scenes. So again, you don't have to worry about it. Like it might be very hard when I show it like this, like, man, what is he doing? I don't understand anything of it. But hopefully by, when you look at the sample application, you see the different uh, techniques that I use. So here, this is the example that uh, ha I, I showed the first time. You see the different categories and this is now with the demo table. Um, and here you see that the slider is working. So you can just edit the page and at ease, you can go through it. You have the select statement here. It's nicely formatted. It's a bit uh, less than it was on the other, uh, in, in the real project, um, because we are just using some demo uh, table. But you see the different 
techniques that I'm using here. Uh, the template is a standard template, <clears throat> but um, when you look at, uh, I, I'm using an HTML expression to specify uh, like the name and description. And here, yeah, there's, there's nothing. So this is when, whenever you hover, you see this description. Um, and that's done by oops, the title attribute here. And this name is dynamically generated. So when I go here, um, this is my name here. And here's the, yeah, the quotation. So I would say, look at this at your ease. Um, the other thing that where you find some, some things is here, where you put your JavaScript. Whenever my page loads, this is what's happening. Uh, I add a class to the different uh, domains and sections. Uh, and then I have, um, uh, like I do the, uh, the height and the show here. Here's my slider code. Um, that's it, okay. Let me go to the second one. And here you see more when I do this. So this is, again, with the demo table, I try to reproduce what I did for this tennis, uh, or like I didn't do it, like my colleagues uh, helped me with this. Uh, so you have some, some things here, which you can update. Um, I can update this thing. You see it's updated in the database. Um, I have an open modal here. But here you see, I left this interactive report a bit. And when I don't break, you see how I do it. So there's a break column, which has this text and it has an item and it has a button and it has the different columns here. When I break it, it moves it up here and Apex is doing this. And with some CSS, I can make it prettier. And this is what I did uh, in the other project. Um, so you can edit this page, go to interactive report. You can go here and you see the styling that I'm using. Like it's a standard interactive report with different columns. Here's my break column and I use Apex item uh, to, to get this uh, text, text box. Um, and I have my select list here to update. Then I have a dynamic action, which looks at the change whenever my change of this input field runs some JavaScript. And I do an Ajax call here to show you that technique. I could have done like a PL SQL process here, uh, which updates something, but I'm using uh, the technique that we are really using. So Apex server process, uh, we are passing some, some data here and the Ajax process that's being called, you find here, change tags. Okay, and you can write the status message. Uh, so updated, uh, if I make this updated online, for example. And I would, well, I, I don't even have to do that. You see updated online. So you see the success message here. So, and uh, like what we did is like we hide this so people don't even see that this is an interactive report. Um, but yeah, sometimes you have to think outside the normal things. So it's not a standard uh, Apex page if you want. Okay, my last technique, and this is where um, we go a little bit further again, same customer. Uh, here we have different sections. So we have for every day, Monday, we generate what we configured previously for every court. Uh, what people can do. But here we assign roles to certain uh, courts. So we say these type of people, they can reserve between those and those hours. Um, here again, we have a button to generate um, the same settings to other days. 
So how would you how would we do this? Um, and I want to focus on this. So this is when I first looked at it, it was like, okay, we have some collapsible regions here. Um, here we can generate that. Like we have some, like this is dynamic. Um, we have some gray columns we need here, uh, but I already showed you how to do that. Uh, and we have some checkboxes. Whenever we click the checkbox here, it has to update here. Whenever we check, click the checkbox here, it has to update there. Um, we have this as well. So what we ended up with is, is this is what is behind it. So it's a PLC core region and we copied the collapsible template. So in Apex, you, you know that there's a template there. So um, there's a collapsible template. We copy the HTML of that. And we put it in our PLC core region. Remember when I did the reporting technique, we use the PLC core region. It's the same exact same thing. Um, the inline dialogs um, pop ups defined on the same page. So it's uh, a region we show or our uh, hide. Uh, whenever we hit, let me go back. Whenever we hit this here, we are submitting the page because we don't want to, like, if this is all generated with PLC code code, we could, like, there's a technique to refresh this, but it's a bit harder. But also, like, you would need to refresh, like, many different things. So it's easier to submit the entire page um, at that point. That's what's happening here. But whenever they click the checkboxes, this is updated automatically with an AJAX process. So again, it might be daunting or like, oh, I don't understand anything of it. But this is why I, why I want to give this presentation. I want to show you how far you can go. And I hoped I built up from the start. And when you look back at this presentation, how you can get to this. So here, I have some code so you can really see uh, how we are doing things. But like this is the template, the collapsible template that we copied. And we use the same, why do we copy this? If universal team ever changes, like our code is exactly the same as universal team. The look and feel will be 100% transparent. So this is why uh, we, we, we copy uh, that. And my saying is always try to stick as close as possible to Apex. Um, if you can do it with a classic report, like or interactive report or interactive grid, use that. If you cannot do it, okay, then use a PLC core region and, and gener generate things, but at, at least try to generate or use the same techniques that Apex is doing. So we use the same classes uh, um, and Apex item, like uh, um, we are not using undocumented features, they're all documented. Um, so here for, so this is on the, the PLSQL uh, region to generate your page. Here, this is more whenever we change something and we could have a, then an, a dynamic action on change of our select list, but the checkbox, the, sorry, the checkbox, but the checkboxes are tricky because they wanted to select the, an entire row and because there's an AJAX process being fired for every row, you don't want to, to do that. Like if you would do it, like you have AJAX process all over the place. So we came up with some JavaScript code to circumvent that. Like whenever they, it's like a bulk update if you want. So this is why there's some custom code here. And here's the AJAX callback. So in the AJAX callback, we basically here, this is generating some JSON. Here you see JSON stringify. So we send all the data at once to uh, our process. Then with the Apex JSON parse, we parse this JSON and we, we update our, uh, um, right, the things we have to, to update. Uh, so here I'm like, I'm showing a, a uh, a, a trimmed down version of it uh, with Apex debug message, so you can see what 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 uh, happened. But again, like that's 
that technique, it's a balancing game of um, finding the right balance of giving the customer what they want or what they ask for and how much effort it costs for you to build an apex. Like there's every line, like Jürgen Schuster, he has this uh, sentence, like every line of code that you produce, you have to maintain and it costs like 70 times more or whatever uh, <laughs> uh, the number is he, he's saying. Um, and it's true, like if you write a lot of custom code, you have to maintain it. So try to be smart with that. So the last section, this is where it's not like this balancing game was hard <laughs> because um, the customer wanted really something really user friendly. Let me uh, play it so you see it. So whenever they, so we made the reservations here, people are going to actually reserve things. So it's a, a box, they can click on something, something uh, they can say, okay, from this time till this time, and this is what I'm going to reserve there and save it and it generates this, this thing. And we are refreshing uh, this. We are going to different days, uh, but all this is JavaScript. And at this point, um, like, oh, it was still playing, sorry. Um, I didn't really want to do that uh, myself. So I asked somebody who's really good in JavaScript, Sunil, and I said, Sunil, this is something for you. So he, he built this, uh, this thing, but there's a lot of JavaScript uh, behind it. Um, and, but still like we try to stick with, uh, with Apex, but here's really not much. So there's a stepping, there's a region, like an HTML region, and there's a diff, and that's about it. Then it's filled with a dynamic action and an Ajax call. So everything that you see on the screen, it's taken from, like it's, it's, it's done with, with uh, an Ajax call. So you don't see, there's no PLSQL region or anything like that to generate the HTML. It's all done by an Ajax call and some JavaScript. We use JSON to transfer data. This was the same as with the previous example. This is a really performant way of, of uh, transferring data. And then with the dialog, we use the standard dialog, but it's going to from another, it's coming from another page and standard dynamic action. Um, but here we are using an external JavaScript library because they can do recurring scheduling. So let me uh, play the video again and let me forward it a little bit. Because here, what you will see, they can not only change the hours, but they can say like, this is recurring and I want daily, weekly uh, here. So here's every day, the, um, it's, it's going to come back. So you see this schedule is now every day. So uh, till the day that you specified and you can customize it. Like when you ever you click, you see this is a recurring event, but like, this, to build recurring events, if you have ever done it, it's, it's hard. Like um, there's, uh, I think Dan McGann uh, tried to, or well, he, he actually uh, wrote a plugin, an Apex plugin a long time ago uh, to do this. Um, but it, it's already quite old. Uh, and like Sunil, he used JavaScript. We are here in JavaScript world, if you want. He used the JavaScript library to, to build this. Uh, recurring schedule. Okay, so um, I, I will now go into uh, recap and then I'll cover some questions. Uh, so I showed three techniques. The first three were for uh, showing data on the screen, doing reports and use universal team to the full extent. Try to know as much SQL as you know, because it will help you templates. I think Richard will cover some of that as well in the next presentation. And then uh, PLSQL region as your last ex escape. If you have to do, write something back to the database or get things from the database, but in a dynamic way, here are the three techniques that I use there. Apex item, uh, dynamic actions, and uh, Ajax calls. So let's go uh, over uh, some questions, QA. 
So how to get upward and downward trend icon in our report based on profit percent to display. So this is uh, a similar technique um, than what, what uh, we are doing in, in, in the examples here. Um, so you would have some case statements where you specify like which arrow, arrow you would uh, need to show. So you do a calculation and you can use maybe an analytical function um, or like I, I would need to see your use case, but then you would use a case statement to specify like, I want to show the downwards icon or the upwards icon. And um, we actually, in another project, uh, we are actually like, in a few weeks, we are coming out with uh, a new thing. Um, and there you will actually see uh, the upwards and downwards uh, trend icon. And I might blog about it at that point. Um, and then, so is this demo app from Unity being available? So yes, it's available. Uh, go to uh, github.com and go to the Helis presentations. And here you find it. I gave this presentation also at Kscope. Uh, so this is the, you can just download it and you have the entire application. Um, <clears throat> how can we avoid DOM manipulations with the generated fields? Um, so yeah, I guess what you mean here is like people can uh, change it here. Like they can ma make some customizations in, in, in the browser and like, I guess this is more related to security. So you want to check what's coming back in uh, in your database. But in this case here, like we are, we are not doing anything bad. Uh, we are using Apex items. So there's an Apex item. Um, this is what Apex is using behind the scenes anyway as well when it generates uh, things. So Apex item text, and we are reading that Apex item out in uh, through, through this technique. So we are using built-in methods uh, to do that. So I, I don't think uh, if, if you're talking about, um, if you want to make sure that like things didn't were, weren't updated in the database by somebody else, you would do this with checksums. So you would need to build something uh, on, on that. Or you can use like row change. If you use quick SQL, there's some, some built-in method to, to prevent on that. Um, Dimitri, if you were to build a tennis interactive report example now, would you start with an interactive grid? Obviously, it would be totally different code of the example of non-standard interactive reports. So yeah, so this one, I really like the interactive report. And to be honest, the interactive grid, I find it really hard to understand. Um, like we, I guess today, yeah, you can definitely use the interactive grid to build this. And it's uh, probably, well, it's not probably, it depends your skill level. Uh, if you're really good in JavaScript and, and uh, you understand the interactive grid, like it's a model view controller or like it's a, it's a different way of thinking, then it's a really good way of, of building uh, this, this kind of uh, report. If you're more like, you know SQL, you know a little bit of HTML, you know a little bit of JavaScript, then this technique is still really good to use the interactive report. Because at the end of the day, this is really, it's not hard to do this. Like, okay, you need to know a little bit of HTML uh, to, to add a, like a button there. Um, but I showed you in the, when you use universal team, you have the generate button thing there. Um, here we are using like on click, we are preparing our URL. Um, this is to get the modal. So we are calling page 10 to get a modal. Uh, we are using this. So this is more PL SQL that you have to learn. Um, here, Apex Server Process, this is 
uh, again, this is uh, AJAX, um, which is fully documented by the APEX team, which is a long, around for a long time. Interactive grid is different, so you would use different techniques there. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think it depends your skill level. If you want to use interactive grid, and, and, and it's, I think it's definitely a good way, and it's really powerful, but it's a different way of thinking. Uh, if you are more comfortable with this, do this because you have to maintain it, right? Okay, so is it possible to send email from ADB using Apex Mail on OCI free tier? I read documentation and blog post and talking about create approved sender that is not possible to create in free tier. Okay, so <laughs> this is on my uh, cloud uh, uh, presentation. Um, so yeah, what, what Apex did, uh, what what the Oracle Cloud team did, um, they made it harder now to to send emails from uh, OCI free. Um, but I think where is it? Uh, was it in September? I, I blogged about this. Um, so yeah, you can see it on my, on my blog how to do it. Uh, but you would need to set up your who can uh, send emails. Uh, before your credits run out. And um, where is it? Renewing, let's encrypt. I don't know when I blocked about that. Well, yeah, it's, it's somewhere here. So um, the short answer is like they, they, uh, it will work during your trial, uh, after your uh, uh, trial. So when you subscribe for the free cloud, you also have this trial piece to it, uh, which then you have full functionality. So you can set up the different things. Um, the free cloud allows like thousands, uh, I think it's limited to thousand emails a day. Um, but if you didn't set up the, 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 the email address that can send it, then you're out of luck. But I, on my blog, I showed the, like, just put your credit card in, you won't be charged, and you get a thousand uh, emails for free. Uh, if you go over, okay, you will be charged, but that's a good way to, to work around that. It's funny to, to search something on your own uh, blog. <laughs> when I search for email, well, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in, uh, in the September time frame, I think when I when I, I, I did that. Okay, I think uh, it's time for the next presenter. Thank you very much for attending, um, and uh, I wish you all a very nice day. Bye.